Hello, and welcome to What the Flick, starring me and Alonzo Duralde. We've staged a bloody coup against <laughs> Ben and Matt and Jenk, who I don't know what Jenk does all day. He doesn't want to hang out with us. And he should be here, actually, for this to talk about The Conspirator. It's a weighty political movie. Lincoln's been shot. One bullet may have killed our beloved president, but not one man. You are charged with having received, entertained, harbored, aided, and assisted John Wilkes Booth, John H. Surratt, and their confederates in traitorous and murderous conspiracy to kill Abraham Lincoln, Vice President Andrew Johnson, and Secretary of State William Seward. How do you plead? I am innocent. The Conspirator stars James McAvoy as a Civil War veteran and lawyer who gets assigned to defend uh, a, a boarding house keeper played by uh, Robin Wright Penn who uh, is uh, accused of being uh, one of the conspirators behind the uh, assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Someone must be held accountable. People want that. The military trial of civilians is an atrocity. You know, what she did is an atrocity. To ensure the survival of this nation, I would do anything. You have to tell us where your son is. Who side are you on? Trying to defend you. You're trying to save you. Were there ever meetings held at the boarding house? Many and always in secret. You were lying. My mother is innocent. I can't know what's going on in that courtroom. You set the rules, pick the judges. There is no limit to how far the prosecution is willing to go. So to me, it felt like somebody handed Robert Redford a gong that said Guantanamo <laughs> Bay on it, and he just hits it over and over again, you know, because this movie keeps reminding you of the parallels between oh, you know, they, they, they talk, they whisper about her being Catholic and now we're afraid of Muslims and, you know, uh, they committed this heinous deed and people want to see them go to prison whether they're guilty or not. And it's the same with the, you know, the people who might or might not have been involved with 9-11. It's like, fine, we get it. It's interesting when you can parallel something that happened in history to something that's going on now. But to do that in a movie, you have to have characters and a story and then have that stuff in the background and let us connect the dots ourselves but this movie just goes straight to the the historical context and there's nothing else and yeah. kevin klein as the secretary of war is totally the rummy Dick Cheney, Cheney figure yeah, here. yeah yeah he says something at one point about um i don't care who needs to pay someone has to pay like he doesn't care whether she's guilty or not but like the in the nation wants revenge and like there she is and she's the only woman accused among all of the, the right. suspects here. And, and also you know and, and uh, uh the the senator played by tom wilkinson accuses him of keeping fear alive right. which is isn't that what colbert says about like <laughs> fox news <laughs> you know keep fear alive uh, so it's like i mean yeah there's tons of parallels and 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 as a history lesson like i'm sure this will be shown to you know high school classes mm -hmm. For decades to come, I did feel like I should be taking notes for the final exam. <laughs> I feel like we're going to be quizzed on this afterward. <laughs> Nobody ever evolves here. Um, everyone, yeah, they're all like human representations of principles, ideas, right? Yeah. And so, like Frederick Aiken, and the, the James McAvoy character, is always a determined, and idealistic, and wants to do the right thing. Um, Robin Wright is always very stoic and very proud, and she's the martyr. Um, Kevin Klein, Secretary of War, is always conniving, devious. Yeah, yeah. and so like, every nobody has an evolution. Nobody like achieves any sort of epiphany. Nobody ever changes. Yeah, it's a political yeah. cartoon. They should all just have labels <laughs> on them, you know, that say what they represent. So uh, you know, I mean, uh, and Robert, this is. Like Robert Redford is is a not untalented filmmaker. He's made some really terrific movies, but but this is the first one he's made since Lions for Lambs, right. and that was another just this polemic about Iraq and stuff. And I agree with him politically, mm -hmm. and I still don't like these movies. You right? Know? No, I agree. It reminded me a lot tonally of Lions for Lambs in that yes, it's very heavy handed. Yeah. It's very sanctimonious. They talk like, at the right. audience. Right. There's no room for any kind of debate. It's like this is what you should think, and this is the only point of view out there, and there's no gray area. No subtlety. I found that also to be true in the way it was shot because mm -hmm. every interior is really dark and then these like slats of misty sunlight <laughs> come piercing through and either they serve as like a moment of enlightenment or they are like placing blame on somebody like like Robin Wright is sitting there looking very proud and very very murderish in her cell her Spartan cell right. and like the slats of light come down on her like oh <laughs> and well, uh, I was it's kind of, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt that in 1865 you either had the sun or you had like lanterns you know <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, you're but, okay with it. But you're right; they do kind of overplay that hand. Did, did you notice, by the way, that somebody else's has her cell later in the film, and whereas she had a mattress on the floor, they now have a bed. It's like, oh, so they they made improvements uh, to the prison after her. Because she, she's a woman, she didn't deserve to have a bed. I, um, also, knows? can we talk about Justin Long's really horrific fake Ooh, facial the hair? The mustache, man. Yeah, that was. I like Justin Long, but it's funny because I was reminded, you know, he's in that movie um, Going the Distance with mm -hmm. Drew Barrymore, which I, I thought was charming. And there's a scene where he is having lunch with his friends, uh, Jason Sudeikis and Charlie, what's his face from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And they're oh, yeah. both growing mustaches wow. and they've got these really silly mustaches. And the, so the whole movie I kept thinking, oh, so now Justin Long has his silly mustache and it's he's got for the whole movie. And yeah. he just, everything about him just is too contemporary. Like he, he yeah. never fits in with everybody, but just the facial hair just cries out like this is fake. Bad. Yeah, he, he feels very modern. Alexis Bledel plays uh, McAvoy's fiance, mm -hmm. and I actually sort of bought her as 19th century. Uh, I mean, I'm a big Gilmore Girls fan, so I, I always associate her as Rory. But like, she she felt like you know a lady mm -hmm. of that period, and and sort of the way that she would respond to stuff. And yet um, she's not fleshed out either. She's just no, like no, no, sweet yeah, and she, boring. She's she's another mm -hmm. stick figure for the for the script to kind of move around. But yeah, there's there's. There's nothing, there's no, there's no there there. Yeah. This is a movie that is about what it's about, but it's not about anything else. Right, that's what I feel like. So let, let's do numbers, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm going to go, you know, uh, I'll give it a five. Okay, I'm going to give it a four, because again, I can't do math, so <laughs> it's a four but and a half. Do, but you can do history. I can. It's, uh, we're giving it a four and a half, not a huge resounding mm. uh, recommendation for the conspirator. Disappointing. Sorry, but more good things to come eventually. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Bye.